Sandra, you have been so focused for so many years on getting to the bottom of this mystery and finding your sister. Do you think this next round, the next search, is going to yield something that you haven't seen yet? I hope so. That's always my hope, to get the remains covered and, you know, if it's my sister, it's my sister and give her the proper burial. But then and if it's somebody else, then I can, you know, that loved one, whoever's loved one it is, can be home and um, obviously, you know, put to rest as well. Tell me about this new effort um, and, and what you hope to accomplish that might be different than the last round uh, where you literally searched under the Illinois-Michigan Canal. Um, this this search would be different because I'm trying. I have a GoFundMe right now to um, like raise money because it costs a thousand dollars a day to get this sonar, and it's actually like a handheld sonar that the diver would use, and the diver would be able to see on his mask the sonar, what the sonar is seeing, and then we would be able to see topside as well. It's it's not as easy as just sending a diver down and then hey there it is. It's the sonar actually reads through the silt, and just sending a diver down there to, um, they're not going to see anything because you know the remains are buried in silt and that's why they're not moving. So tell me about the original images um, that you revealed to all of us that, in your estimation, appeared to be a skull with the jaw that had been separated and some other human remains. Can you kind of walk me through that, like from the beginning as though I've never seen it, and tell me how you came to determine what you believe to be Stacy's remains? Basically, what you're looking at is the, like with the, that's an ROV, which is a remote operated vehicle, and it's, you know, it's like an underwater submarine. and. It had sonar and live video. So when we were driving that, um, there was no visibility with the video. And we were using the sonar to get to this target. And once the sonar got close enough, we had, you know, you lose visual on the sonar. And that's when we had landed the sonar and all the silt washed away and that's what you see there. That front claw, that's the grabber arm on the um, ROV. Um, that black piece right in the middle there. Underneath that, you see the skull and uh, a right eye socket and the jaw, or like the, the skull is like this and the eyes are like looking back at us. And then the lower jawbone. Right. So it's like is actually it's as though it's upside down, right? So to, to sort of navigate Correct. here, that that center uh, black uh, device with the three holes in it, that the skull would be underneath that and upside down, almost as though it's like a head in a in a uh, hairdresser's sink looking back back at you. Is that sound about right? Correct. Yes. Okay. And so now what I couldn't believe, Cassandra, is that you had found all this. You had done all this legwork yourself with these experts, and you have this video, but it feels as though the police and the FBI and the authorities who have the budgets, they haven't stepped up and, and seen this as a, as a viable clue that's worthy of, of pursuing. What did they tell you? We actually had the ROV sitting in that position right there so they could put divers down and grab it and this, I had the state's attorney and the St Illinois State Police out there, and I believe one of them one of them commented, "What do you expect us to get a boat out here right now?" So it was just like pushed off, and then that's when we got the ROV out. We had um, just I just figured out how to like what what should I do now? Because obviously, so that's when I started calling the FBI. And I call the FBI every day, this one individual, and I called him every day of the week until he came. And that was three months later, and they just basically, like I was explaining, they just did a blind dive. Didn't ask for my assistance. 
or anything or where we were, or where the RLV was. They just went out there and did a blind dive. And most of the time, the divers just, were on top so of the water floating. You yes, know, just, it is. Yeah, and with all that silt at the bottom of the canal, and obviously, you know, a decade and a half uh, later, it, it's so frustrating to hear this. So, I, when I spoke with Drew inside the the prison, I asked him about these remains. I said, "What do you make of what um, Cassandra has uh, has spotted with her team?" And his response to me was, "What? She's still out there doing that." And it was it was quite jarring to me. I wondered what your reaction was uh, to that response from him. I, you know, I tend to I don't watch Drew if he's on the media. I it doesn't do anything for me. I mean, I don't care to see him. I just keep focused on what I'm doing, and that is bringing my sister home and giving her a proper burial. Do you think this second time, this second search that you're that you're moving forward with is going to be the success story you're hoping for? That's what I always hope for. And if it's not, then I won't stop. I will continue until those remains are brought up and given the proper, proper burial they deserve. Cassandra, I'm so thankful uh, for your time and I wish you all the luck and, um, and I wish you all the success that you deserve and I wish you peace as well in this extraordinarily sad uh, and very long tale. Thank you for doing this tonight. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.